This tutorial will be solving for enthalpy of a reaction, enthalpy of a combustion reaction, and enthalpy of heat of a solution uh, using calorimetry. Um, so I'll be I'll be going over actually the background. Um, I think in the following tutorial I'll end up doing a example problem of um, at least heat of combustion. So <clears throat> what are these terms exactly? So we need to kind of like define what these terms are before we um, go and look and see how a calorimeter can help us solve for, for this. So um, heat of a reaction, first of all, is uh, delta H, and we write Rxn. So this is a more generalized term. It's a more general term. Um, describing any heat change during a reaction. So it describes um, any heat change for any reaction. And they, uh, they, it's, it's the number that you put after a chemical reaction. So if you write uh, H2 gas uh, burning in O2 gas, this creates water vapor, and it releases heat. So we write delta H, and then some number, okay, kilojoules. Okay, this right here is delta H, Rxn, the heat exchange that happened in the reaction. So then what is delta H, COMB? Heat of combustion... So this is heat of combustion. This is specifically for a combustion reaction. Specifically for a combustion reaction. So for example, if you burn methane, O2, CO2 plus H2O. Uh, balancing this, we have a 2 there, 4 oxygen, so we need a 2 there. And delta H here would be negative 890 kilojoules. So this right here is, since this is a combustion reaction, you have a fuel, and it's burning in oxygen. That's what this is. Burn in oxygen and your products are CO2, H2O. So these are so common that they have their own name. So this is the heat of combustion. So if you read a problem and it says calculate the heat of combustion for this reaction, they're saying find this number. Okay, and they're just, when they say heat of combustion, they're specifying what type of reaction it is, that it's uh, something is being burned. And, uh, and this is always gonna be um, exothermic, okay, because heat's released during combustion reactions. Now, heat of solution is delta H S O L N. This one is, uh, these are for reactions or dissolving processes. Um, in happening in water. Okay, so for example, uh, if you have a, a precipitation counts, okay, water, I should say a, an aqueous environment, so look for, you know, a, a good way to tell is look for parentheses, A, Q, okay, for the physical states on a reaction. So, for example, if you have uh, if you have A G plus and C O minus, so these are going to form a precipitate, okay? And then there's a heat exchange. So I believe this is like very slightly exothermic. This reaction. So it's A G, and here we have A Q. This is what I mean. Look for A Q. So it's a heat uh, exchange with the surroundings, with the system, which is the reaction which either uh, takes in heat or requires heat, AgCl solid. And uh, there's a delta H associated with this. I think it's, uh, I want to say it's like negative 2.7. It's very slightly exothermic. 
okay, this process. Um, but the point is, since it happens inside water, then it's called uh, a heat of solution. So if you're reading a word problem, they say calculate the heat of solution for when hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide. Okay, they're saying uh, calculate the heat released when this reaction happens. So when you get uh, uh, NaCl. So they're saying what is this? Okay, if you get some word problem and they say calculate the heat of solution for this reaction, they're saying calculate this. Okay, and they're specif specifying when they say solution that it's happening and it's this process is happening in water. Keep in mind, I said I said a reaction or a dissolving process. So this one, I I know this react this uh, dissolving process when you dissolve CaCl2, this is exothermic. Just by the process of the ion splitting up, it actually releases a lot of heat this process. So this would also be qualify as a, a heat of solution. Okay, so if you read it, if you had another word problem, they said calculate the heat of solution of calcium chloride dissolving. They're saying they're saying using this reaction here or this dissolving process, what is this number? So those are some background terms and now we're gonna move into um, how you use a calorimeter to come up with these numbers. So how do you actually get these, what I've been saying so far? Okay, so next slide. Uh, using the calorimetry, the heat equation, um, I believe it should have a, a value here, typo. Okay, for uh, heat of reaction, heat of combustion, or heat of solution. So a calorimeter, there's basically three steps here, and I'm going to draw out, uh, I'm going to sketch a, a lab that we'll be doing, which is the combustion of a of a candle, okay, and then here's a a soda can and a thermometer, okay, and then there's water inside the soda can. So, uh, and this will help uh, explain what I'm going to write out. So, there's basically three steps here. So, uh, um, and this, by the way, is a C25H52 plus O2. Okay, um, step one is we're going to calculate, um, so you, you should have some data here. So you're going to have a TI um, and a TF, so your TI, and you'll have a TF also, okay, and, uh, and then you're going to have this mass of water here, so you have mass, and you know what? It's filled with water, so we know the heat the heat capacity of water is 4.184, so we know that number. Joules per gram times Celsius. And uh, then we could calculate Q if we just watch the thermometer when this is heating. So calculate heat of the calorimeter. Part of the calorimeter is actually the soda can itself, the aluminum. So that's why we don't necessarily call it the heat of the water we're going to say Q of cal. So, and cal represents the calorimeter, which is includes all of the surroundings. So that's the first step, is we're going to use that, is uh, and use the heat equation to do that. So we use Q equals MC delta T. And this is for, uh, this is for, let's see, yeah, this is for, this is almost always uh, when you're using water. Okay, there's another type of calorimeter called a bomb calorimeter, which actually uh, um, the uh, mass is included with the value for C. It's already been like incorporated in the heat capacity of the calorimeter. So the equation for that, this is for a bomb calorimeter, and uh, C is actually for the for the entire calorimeter. Okay, and okay, this equation is if you're using. This is for a calibrated. bomb calorimeter which is primarily used for 
to study um, combustion reactions. Okay, and you, you'll see some examples of 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 using those in um, in class. I mean, we don't have a bomb calorimeter in class, but you'll see some from the from the textbook, like on the end of the chapter problems. Okay, so this is no. Okay, notice that we're we're getting the heat. Step one is the surroundings. So we could we could like make a kind of like a uh, overlying theme for step one. Is you're calculating the heat of the surroundings. That's what the calorimeter does. We need to put it. That's that's this right here. This is the surroundings. Okay, we need to put this in terms of the system, which is step two. Okay, because we want the heat of reaction for the system. We want it for this this chemical process that happened. So that's step two. Is um, is we apply? And this is what allows this whole thing to be possible. Is we apply the first law here. And put Q in terms of the the system or the chemical process that happened. So um, basically, if it's a if it's exo, so if your calorimeter um, absorbed heat, then you flip the sign. And so if that heat change was positive, then you flip the sign to put it in terms of the system and you make it negative. So you go Q of rea of the actual reaction. Okay, if the delta T, so this is if delta T for the surroundings was positive. If delta T is negative, it was endo. So that means the uh, the temperature actually decreased of the surroundings. So me that means the system was taking in heat. So that's endo. Okay. So then in that case, your Q. So if your delta T is negative, your Q is going to be negative for the surroundings, the calorimeter. So what you do is to put it in terms of the system is you flip the sign and make the system positive. For the to get the correct sign. Okay. So. Uh, that's step two is you're just flipping the sign basically from step one whatever you got in step one you flip the sign that's step two okay step three is we don't have the correct units is if you recall uh, the units for this for a heat of reaction are actually it's kilojoules but it's kilojoules per mole of material that was used so when we do the candle lab it's going to be per mole of candle wax so we need to put this in in a, a molar amount, the heat released in, uh, per mole of substance. So what you do is you divide um, whatever you got from step two. So sometimes it might be endo or exo. So I'll put plus or minus Q R X N. So you divide that by moles of whatever the system. whatever the system is okay and i'll put in parentheses the quantity uh, used in the reaction or dissolving process or you know the amount of fuel that was burned if it's a combustion reaction quantity used in the reaction or dissolving process okay and i think this will make more sense when we start looking at examples Okay, you now have uh, delta H RxN, delta H combustion, or delta whatever whatever process that you're studying, or delta H of the solution. Okay, lastly, this is sometimes you might need to do this. The last thing to do is you write a balanced chemical reaction uh, and multiply delta HRxn by the coefficient. Okay, this is uh, if 
the problem asks to do that. Okay, 